All right, so I've got a new pen so we can continue on with the examples. Again, we're in section 1.6 on page 133, and I want to look at problem 28 now. So we have f of x being defined as 1 over x minus 1 and g of x being defined as 2 over x plus 3 Now, we're trying to find the domain of F composed with G. So it's going to be helpful to find the domain of F and the domain of G in the process. So the domain of F, well, what can go wrong in F is that we could be dividing by zero. The only way we could divide by zero is if the denominator is zero, which means x would have to be equal to 1. So we don't want to divide by 0, so we don't want x to be equal to 1. And a similar thing happens with g. In g, we could be dividing by 0, and that's going to occur when x equals minus 3. So we don't want x to be minus 3, because we don't want to divide by zero. So, this will be helpful in determining the domain of F composed with G, but we also need to find just what F composed with G actually is. So, this notation is just F of G of x. So working inside out, what's g of x? Well, g of x is 2 over x plus 3. So now we're going to plug this 2 over x plus 3 into f, which means wherever we see x in the definition of f, we're going to replace it with what's between the parentheses here. So we have 1 over x, but we're not going to write x, we're going to write 2 over x plus 3, and then there's no more x's, so we just copy. There's nothing left to replace. So this is ugly because I've got a fraction in the denominator of another fraction. So we're going to want to combine uh, fractions in this case. And to do so, we need at least common denominator. Well, one doesn't have a denominator, but if something doesn't have a denominator, you can always think of it as being divided by one. So our least common denominator here is x plus three. So we don't have to do anything with the first term in the denominator. The 2 over x plus 3 already has x plus 3 in its denominator. But 1, we need to multiply 1 over 1 by x plus 3 on the top and by x plus 3 on the bottom. And 1 times x plus 3 is just x plus 3. This way, we've got two fractions with the same denominator. And so, we can now combine the two fractions in the bottom here. So it's going to be 2 minus parentheses x plus 3, because this negative gets distributed to both terms in the numerator here. Or, another way to say that is we need to put everything in parentheses. So that the signs get distributed correctly.
So we have 2 minus x minus 3, because the negative distributes. And we're going to get from this, we're going to get 2 minus 3 is a minus 1 minus x over x plus 3. And so 1 over a fraction, that's just taking the reciprocal. That's just flipping the fraction around. So rather than being on the bottom, x plus 3 will be on top. And I can put minus x minus 1, just reordering these. It was on the top, but it's now going to be on the bottom. So this, or if you will, I could factor out a negative from the denominator. And pulling the negative out is going to leave me with x plus 1 in the denominator. This is f composed with g. And so we need to look at what the domain of this function is going to be. Well, the domain of this function, x is going to go into g. So what did we say couldn't go into g to start with? Well, we said that negative 3 couldn't go into g. Otherwise, we'd be dividing by 0. So we're going to have to include that in this domain. We can't have x being minus 3. Otherwise, it's not a problem here, but it's a problem everywhere else. You know, x being negative 3 gives me a 0 in the denominator. At every step along the way, except for these last few steps, but we want x values that work at every step of the way, not just part of the way. So x can't be minus 3, and x can't be, well, if we look at this, x can't be negative 1, because negative 1 is going to make the denominator 0, we don't want the denominator to be 0, so we don't want x to be equal to negative 1. And this, I believe you'll find, is going to be, let's see, no, nope, no, it doesn't turn out to be that case. So we do need to, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong function here x equals, does not equal negative 1, you can think of as arising in a different way. You can think of it as we don't like 1 going into f. Just like we didn't like minus 3 going into g, and we got that restriction there, we don't want 1 going into f. Well, that means that to avoid a 1 going into f, we don't want 2 over x plus 3 to be equal to 1. This is going to turn out to give us x does not equal minus 1, but this is just another way to think about it. You would multiply both sides by x plus 3. subtract 3 from both sides, and you have x does not equal minus 1. So in the end, our composition of f of g of x is minus x plus 3 over x plus 1, And the domain of this function
we didn't like x being negative 3 because that would throw off g. And we don't want x to be minus 1 because if x is minus 1, then g, if x is minus 1, then working backwards, then g of minus 1 is going to be 1, and we don't want 1 going into f, because we'll have minus 1 going into g, g of minus 1 will be 1, and then 1 will go into f, which is exactly what we don't want. Or you can see this as just look at the denominator here. In order for the denominator here not to be 0, x can't be negative 1. And I know I'm already running super long in this video, so I'm going to go through the next example relatively quickly. Last one I want to do is number 32, where f of x is defined to be 4 minus x squared, and g of x is defined to be x squared. So the domain of g there's nothing going wrong in G. There's no square roots, there's no denominators. It's everything. There's no restriction. But we've got square roots in F, so stuff could go wrong here. Oops, I gave away the composition. It's supposed to be, F is just supposed to be square root of four minus X. We don't want what's inside the square root to be negative. So we want it to be greater than or equal to zero. We want it to be positive or zero. We just don't want it to be negative. We don't want it to be less than zero. So we have that x should be less than or equal to four here. Now let's compose the two. f of g of x is what I already revealed. It's just f of g of x and g of x is x squared and f of x squared is going to be square root of 4 minus not x, we're replacing x with x squared. So there's nothing wrong with g. Any number can go into g, but the number coming out of g has to, be, has to be less than or equal to 4. So whatever x value we put into g is fine, but whatever comes out of g, the result of g of x, the result of putting x into g, has to be less than or equal to 4. Well, that means x squared has to be less than or equal to 4. And the only way x squared is less than or equal to 4 is if minus 2 is less than or equal to x, and that's less than or equal to 2. If you don't follow how we got that, that's okay. Um, that's part of P3 that we're going to be going over later. Um, but if you understand the process I've, you know, up to here, just take this as given. You know, just believe my word in this case, and we'll learn why this is the case later on. So, there was no restriction on G. This was the only restriction that we had to have. So, our answer is F of G of X is square root of 4 minus x squared and the domain of this composition is 
written as an inequality, minus 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. But written as uh, an interval, an interval notation, it's minus 2 to 2 where we include both endpoints. So we use square brackets on both endpoints. So that's the answer to 32.